you see this right here? This is how we know our onions are ready to harvest. When the necks on the onions get soft like this and they start to fall over, that's when you know you can go ahead and pull these babies up from the ground. So these here are our Texas Legend Sweet Onions that we get from Dixondale Farms that we planted back in November. We've also got these red Creole, these red onions right here that we planted at the same time. And since onions like plenty of water and fertilizer, we like to plant our onions on double rows with drip tape in the middle. That way we can give them plenty of water and we can also inject fertilizer and make sure they are well fed. If you want to see how we do that, I'll put a link in the video up here in the corner. You can see back in November when we planted these onions. But the Texas Legend onion here is by far my favorite sweet onion to grow. You can see most of these are baseball size or bigger, many of them softball size or bigger. I really like the Texas Legend onion because it grows well here in the south. It's a great short day onion. It stores well and it's nice and sweet. Now in the past we have grown the yellow granix, some people call it the Vidalia onion, but those tend to be a little more flattened. The bulbs on these are nice and round, which makes them really good for slicing. They're a lot easier to cook with in my opinion. So I really like these Texas legends for that. And in talking with Bruce over at Dixondale Farms, he told us that the sweetness of the onion is strictly a function of how much water it receives. So if you give your onions plenty of water, uh, they're going to be equally as sweet among varieties. So after we pull our onions from the ground, we like to lay them on the grass here beside the garden for a few days. Let them sit out in the sun and cure. It's important that you let the onions cure or dry out further before you put them in the storage area. So we let them sit out in the sun for a few days until the stems get nice and crispy like this right here. But you want to make sure when you're doing this curing process that you keep an eye on the weather. The last thing you want is for these onions to get wet. So when you start to cure them in the sun, take a look at your weather forecast and make sure you're going to have a couple dry days. That'll give you plenty of time for them to cure and then you can get them in the storage area before the rain comes. So here in the deep south, we don't really have storage cellars or basements. But most everybody that has a homestead has one of these old open air barns with a dirt floor on them. And that's where most people used to store things like onions, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and winter squash. So we just spread everything out on the dirt underneath this covered barn and it, it'll keep for you know six months at a time. However, the problem I was having was that sometimes if, if it was raining and the wind was blowing just in the right direction, it would blow moisture in here and moisture would get on my potatoes or onions or whatever was on the ground. And, and you really want that stuff to get wet while it's being stored. And so I wanted to, to come up with a better idea to save more space and also keep everything dry. So one of our projects this winter was to build me a storage rack so I could get those things up off the ground and keep them more dry and also save a little space by stacking things vertically instead of spreading it out all out horizontally on the ground. So I built this storage rack here. Uh, I've got four by fours on the ends and in the middle. It's about uh, six foot tall, 10 foot long. And I got four different racks here. Each rack is about a foot and a half apart, which gives me plenty of room to stick my head in there, reach in there comfortably, everything like that. Um, it also works really well for storing my harvesting containers like these tub trucks here. As a side note, if you've never used these tub trucks here, these are the best harvesting containers that we have found. Unlike a normal five gallon bucket that'll get brittle and cracked, these things here are flexible and basically indestructible. And we use them for almost everything around our garden and the homestead. But back to the storage rack here. So I use hardware cloth on the shelves. I use the hardware cloth that has uh, half inch squares on it and uh, rolled that out and stapled that to each of the shelves. I probably got about $200 in this, $150 worth of lumber and 50 or so in the hardware cloth. So not a terrible investment at all for the value that this thing is going to provide for our homestead 
and keeping and storing our vegetables for a longer amount of time. So when I'm putting my onions on the storage rack, I just lay them out. I don't want to stack them on top of one another, but just lay them out so they're not touching too much in a single layer. And I like to leave the um, tops on them. Some people will cut the tops off. I like to leave the tops on them because it keeps the onions from rolling around too much on this hardware cloth. So we just lay them out in a single layer and then they'll be good here for up to six months even longer so we will probably have onions up until when we plant onions again this year in november so for us onions are one of the most valuable crops in the garden they don't take up a lot of room and they store for a very long time so we can have onions for a while of one crop um, the these here did take a little while to grow um, i was looking at my phone the other day because i was thinking man these onions this year are never going to get ready and I was looking at my phone and, and I noticed that last year we were harvesting onions around April and here it is middle of May harvesting this year. But we just had such a cool and cold winter this year that it just slowed them down a little bit. But nevertheless, we ended up with a really, really good harvest. So we hope you enjoyed this video. We'd definitely like to see or hear how you store your onions. You know, obviously there's more than one way to skin a cat. So tell us in the comments or, or add a photo and show us how you keep your onions stored and uh, we'd love to see it. 